thanks for joining me today in today's video we're going to make a loom knit scrubby pad this is a little different than the actual round scrubby you're used to I did use a different kind of yarn which I'll list next and um, if you don't have that yarn you can use scrubby yarn that you normally use for the round scrubbies with 100% cotton so you just double the strands and it'll work up just as well so let's get started in this video I'm going to be using my new yarn bee scrubology scrub it yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby you'll also need your loom tool and a pair of sharp scissors I'm using a 24 peg loom you'll need a darning needle and we're going to start by making a slip knot We're going to place it on the anchor peg. Now you can put it on the outside if you want, or you can just start with peg one and place your slip knot there. And we're going to start our cast on. This is going to be an E wrap cast on. If you have a different cast on that you like, feel free to use that. The E-Wrap cast on is very easy to do and perfect for beginners. I cast it on 12 pegs and now I'm going to do the E-Wrap the other way back to the anchor peg. So I'm making tiny little E's on each one of the peg. My cast on is 12 pegs. So now we're back so we're going to secure peg one, take the bottom stitch and place it over the top of the peg. So we're going to do this on each one of the pegs. Take the bottom over the top and this is our cast on. Okay, now just push this down just a little bit. You don't have to do it too much. Now we're going to go the other way and we're going to do the purl stitch. So the purl stitch is placing your working yarn underneath the stitch on the peg, pulling it through, making a loop, taking it off the peg, putting it back on and tightening the stitch. So I'm going to do it real slow so you can see what I'm doing here. There's my loop. I'm going to remove it off the peg. Place it back on the peg, the loop back on the peg, so it's a new loop. And then I'm going to tighten. So see how I'm drawing it up, pulling the loop out, taking it off, and placing the new loop back on. We're going to do this for each one of the pegs until we get to the last peg. What I would recommend is placing some sort of ribbon or stitch marker on that last peg so you know when you're doing the purl stitch, we're actually going to knit that last peg. We're not going to do the purl stitch. So unless you'll remember, I would suggest placing a stitch marker just as a reminder now that we're at the last peg here we're gonna do an e-wrap stitch sometimes that's tricky to remember and then now we're going to go the other way and again we're gonna do the e-wrap stitch so we're gonna start we're gonna skip that first peg why do we skip the first peg it's to make the edge nice and clean so we want the edge to be straight. So that's why we skip that first peg on each of the sides. Okay, so now we're back at the anchor peg. And again, we're gonna take the bottom over the top. So take the bottom stitch over the top. We're going to alternate doing this from knit to purl. So it's actually an e-wrap knit to a purl stitch. 
And this is how we're making our scrubby pad. So now we're back. And again, we're going to skip that first peg and we're going to start our purl stitch again, making that loop and taking it off the peg. So we're going to continue doing that. Now this is going to form our actual scrubby pad. So the amount of rows are up to you. A knit and a purl is considered one row. And for this, I did about 15 rows. So just keep on until you get to where you want. So now it's time to bind off. So we're going to start at peg two and go down that peg with your working yarn. You'll need to thread your yarn with your journey needle and then go back up the first peg. Go behind the second peg. and take your darning needle down the second peg. Just pull it through. It's gonna get stuck on the pegs more than likely, so just do your best to feed it through. If you go slow and just, you know, fix it with your fingers, it'll be fine. Just take your time. So we're going down peg two. Now we're going up peg three, back down the previous peg, Then we're going behind again. So take that uh, yarn and put it behind and then take your darning needle and go down that peg and pull it through with the thread behind the peg. And then we're going to go up the next peg. Not this peg, but this peg. Go up. And then down the previous peg. And we're doing this so it's not a tight bind off. So just continue this pattern, move the yarn behind the next peg and take your darning needle and go down. And what I'll do is link this, well, I'm actually not gonna link it, I'm gonna write it down. Now go up the next peg. Down the previous peg. Behind the next peg and take the darning needle down up the next peg down the previous peg, up 
behind the peg to the side and down with the darning needle. Up the next peg, and I'm walking you through this step by step. Down the previous peg. I'm trying to get it close so you can see, but I'm trying not to get the camera too blurry. Now we're going up the next peg. And then behind. And down that peg. Up the next peg, down the previous peg, and again behind the peg next to it, and down. Pull it through, we're almost done. Now go to the next peg and go up. down the previous peg, now we're going to go behind the peg next to it and down with our darning needle. Up the peg next to it, pull it all the way up, down the previous peg. behind the peg to the left again and down with the darning needle. Now up the peg to the left. And now we're going to take it off the loom. Again, this is just a bit of a stretchy bind off. We don't want to do a tight bind off because then our scrubby pad will look funny and it won't be even with the bottom. So now we're going to sew our loose ends in. So just thread your darning needle. And again, the key to this is just Make sure it's secure and hide it as best you can. There's really no perfect way to sew in. In my opinion, there's no perfect way. Just make sure your tail has a knot in it and then work from there to hide the yarn and make it secure. So I'm gonna give this a cut now that it's secure. And then I'm going to work on the other one where our slip knot was. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just make it's already it already has a knot. So now I'm just going to thread the needle and hide this tail into my scrappy pad. All right. So this is pretty well hidden, so I'm just going to put it through and then I'm just going to give it a cut. And there's a little piece up here. I, I don't know, the yarn was tied together and it left that. So I'm just going to give that a cut too so I don't stare at it all the time. And that is it. We have our scrubby pad. 
Now I also wanted to mention, if you don't have this particular scrubby yarn, that's okay. You can take scrubby yarn, like the normal that we make our scrubbies with, with 100% cotton and make the same exact scrubby pad. Any scrubby yarn along with 100% cotton yarn will work just fine for this project. Now I'm just going to show you the other yarns that I was explaining that you could use. This is regular scrubby yarn. If you can see the, the way it is. And then you would just double it with the 100% cotton yarn. Which obviously these don't go together. But um, these would be the same. This would be the kind of, this. This would be the type of yarn you would use if you don't have that actual scrubology yarn, which I did get at Hobby Lobby. So uh, I just wanted to show you what exactly I mean of which two yarns you can use. So I hope that helps. That's going to do it for our Loom Knit Scrubby. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help me. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and Click the notification bell so you'll get every video that I upload. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one.